Hi everyone, this is Killshot99 Gaming. This is Fear the Walking Dead Fan Reactions episode number 7. This is the mid-season finale. Before we start, just want to say Jason Moonshot Phillips will give this a 10. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it's not. Um, there were some better moments from tonight's episode. Uh, certainly, um, it's a little bit different. Uh, but there was still some Fear of the Walking Dead, um, I, I guess opportunity is the word that I would use because we are going to circle back and talk about um, just some things that they've been doing, they've been hiding. They did tease some good things for next season, so we'll jump in and talk about that as well. So uh, first and foremost, thanks everybody, appreciate you guys all being here. We got a little bit to unpack, so... Um, Let's do what we do in these uh, reaction videos, and I want to start out from a 1 to a 10. Just want to see what your initial reaction was to Fear of the Walking Dead tonight. Give me some scores, 1 to a 10. Um, pretty high, Busy B. Uh, 8.9 is certainly up there. 8, uh, probably closer, Bong Master. 6 from Julia, 7.5, Liz Burnett, Amy gives it a 6, Hippo with a 5. We got some range tonight, Samantha with an 8, Football Master with a 7, Disney with an 8, Kel 6.9, Coma Drug 7, Cassandra Laboom an 8, Diana C 8.2. I am going to give tonight's episode. Are you guys ready for it? Dimes, 8.2. I, I know. <laughs> Eric Beach coming in with 8 out of 10. Oh, holy. Wait a minute. Moonshot said an 8, but as a midseason. I'm, hold on. Hold on, Elizabeth. I'm coming to join you. Um, Moonshot with a 6. This is... This is craziness. This is craziness and madness. Jason, I didn't think you could, I didn't think your scores could go below an eight. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have a lot of fun with it tonight. Hey, I'm going to give it a solid 7.5. Um, I, I think it, has, it had the opportunity to be one of the better episodes that I've seen so far this season. The only reason why I didn't score it higher is because they keep shooting themselves in the foot. They, What they've done poorly up to this point this season, in my opinion, undermined what they did tonight. I, I liked where they were going with it. The problem is, Jenny is looking meaner. We found out Jenny might have killed a few more people. Um, she's had Grace locked up. Now she's going to use Grace's leverage, which isn't a bad thing because... Well, that's what Alicia and Morgan were both kind of going to do with Dakota. So the previews look good. But again, let me ask this question. We've seen previews this season from the first seven episodes. But when we see it play out, it's never as good as the previews, right? You know what I mean by that? It's like we saw the bounty hunter and it wasn't that good. But it was cool that we had the bounty hunter. We saw the people with the mask, and we were like, yeah, it's going to be really cool, people with the mask. And they still could be, but not yet. So now we get a kind of a twisted strand. We get Daniel on his knees looking like he's getting ready to be executed. So it looks like we almost got a Negan scene coming up. We've got um, Morgan's going to be kind of handcuffed a little bit. Because now there's leverage. And then we got some creepy father time dude that is got Alicia trapped. So all those things to me look like potential for the second half. They look like they could be good. But I'm just going to patiently, patiently wait. Because I just don't know that Jenny can kill anybody. But we do leave it on the note where she wants everybody. Everybody that was in that gulch, she wants them all back. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, 
Again, none of this would be happening if June would have just freaking killed her last week. This is my point. So I can't really I can't really give it one score and forget everything that's happened up to this point. Small example. Um they said this season was going to be Something along the lines, and before we get too far into it, sorry everybody, just want to give a shout out to the patrons up there on the screen. Love you guys. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. And all of you guys tuning in to listen to me rant a little bit and to chat a little bit and talk about Fear the Walking Dead a little bit. All of the cool stuff that we do. They said that Fear the Walking Dead was going to be kind of like a Western. But about 45 minutes into it, how many people thought you were watching like Evil Dead 2? That you were watching a B-rated horror movie? Night of the Living Dead, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. It, it switched over suddenly from a cowboy movie to a, a, a bad cinema horror movie where they're all stuck in this house in the woods. And it could have been creepy but it wasn't creepy. And this is fear. Stop killing me with the opportunity. And this is what I mean by that. People died. They are, they're in this house. You got creepy villain guy, Ed. And he's not as bad as you thought he was going to be. Why, why can't Ed just be a weirdo? Why can't he just be a, a psychopath? Why can't he just be a killer? That's number one, okay? Number two. How did he just give her freedom? Okay, he drugged her, tied her up. Then it's basically like, let's play some chess, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, fine. So they play chess, and then Alicia's like, well, I'm cold. Okay, no problem. I'll make a fire. I get you a blanket. No, 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 no. I'll go get the blanket myself. I don't even, I, I don't know about you guys. How many people have ever been over at somebody's house, and instead of them getting something for you, you get up and just roam around their house? Maybe. Maybe some of you guys. Not me. I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever, and somebody said, hey, although it's only down the hall like two doors, um, you go find it. Hey, you know, go down to the room, and, and then she goes wandering, starts picking up his stuff, and then there he is again, like, no, not bad. I told you. I told you. You know, she goes in, turns on the radio. She has time to take a nap brush your teeth, take a shower, turn on the radio. He's listening, by the way. doesn't stop her. We find out later on that he was listening in to her calling Jenny, but just never did anything about it. I mean, if he's so worried about it, why didn't he storm in there and break the radio or turn the radio off? So that's what I mean about a 7.5. There's just always the fear of the walking dead incongruency. Again, I think Ed and Alicia fought but didn't fight and went back and forth like four times. William doesn't want to show up. William doesn't want to show up because he knows that, hopefully he watches the playback, he knows Jenny ain't scary. We've established that. In fact, Morgan is more scary because Morgan killed the Rangers. So, no, seven, I'm okay with 7.5, Moon, because I thought it had a lot of potential. But what I didn't like is, again, it's lazy writing. <laughs> Wait, we got to go. We got to go. Where's Ed? <laughs> He's sleeping. Huh? Yeah, yeah. 
I stabbed him with a syringe. He's going to be asleep for a while. Okay, cool. Okay, let's get out of here. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. Next time you try to tranquilize somebody, make sure you hit a vein. Come on. For the love of God, man. Come on. You could have done that better. That part could have been completely cut out of my mind for the rest of my life. I didn't like it. Anybody here love that? I, I did not. I thought that was kind of a little bit, a little too much back and forth. I mean, there's a lot of ways they could have done that. But it was this whole cat and mouse thing with Ed. And I just think it would have been more cool if Ed just had like, I don't know, a whole lot more bodies. The walkers were cool. The antlers were cool. A whole lot of deer he had to kill to get all those antlers. But a few more rangers, a few more experiments, make him a little bit more creepy, make it like the house of Frankenstein or something. Because I thought they were there. They went through the trouble of, and see, I think this part was good writing. I like the setup. I like the road. I like Dakota being in the road. I like... Um, finding out after the fact that Morgan killed all the rangers. I thought all that was good. I like the fact that they ended up in a creepy house and you got Alicia and Charlie. They make it up to the creepy house. Eh, I didn't like the part, you keep watch, I'll go in the creepy house. That's a little overplayed. I would have liked it better if both of them would have just kind of went up to the house and then at least if they got there, all right, we're in the house. I'll go left. You go right. I mean, that's less cliche than having somebody stand out in the woods. You stay out here, keep watch. And by the way, if you find something, you got to yell, and I'm going to hear you, and they're going to hear you, so it doesn't really matter. So I I didn't like how they played that out, and they just do it as kind of super, super nice. Oh, Will, come on. Don't even. Don't even. (laughs) She's already crazy. She's crazy, but she's not a villain. She's not even scary. And, and, it technically, her becoming crazy does not make her a villain. She might be pushed to craziness now. But we'll see. Nobody is dying because you guys already know. Okay, here's... Will, here's the problem. And those of you watching, I don't have the spoilers, but I'm going to give you a big reveal here. So if you guys want... My bold prediction, she ain't killing Grace, she ain't killing the baby. Not going to happen. If you guys want my bold prediction, here is what is going to absolutely deflate it. Because there's one big question why all this back and forth is going on. One big question. You guys think it's about Jenny and about Jenny wanting to kill Grace and about Dakota and about Leverage. No, it's not. The question we should all be asking right now, who blew up Tank Town? That's the villain. That's the big reveal. All this other stuff of... She's going to execute Daniel. She's going to kill Grace. She's going to kill a baby. None of that's happening. None of it. Everything is a, it, it's just smoke and mirrors right now. All of these groups are going to need each other to fight the bigger villain. That's the big setup. If Jenny kills Daniel, then there's zero chance that her and Morgan are ever going to fight on the same team. So what you're going to see is you're going to see all these groups merge back together. They're going to need each other because there's a batter group out there. They got submarines and they're blowing up Tank Town. 
Not even about Jenny. Jenny is just some, uh, she's emotionally charged because of Dakota and because of the protection of her family. She just lost her hand. I mean, that's got to bother her a little bit. But no. And Will, I wasn't, I wasn't too far off your mark of eight tonight. I gave it a 7.5. Again, I thought it had potential. I liked the horror movie vibe to it. I didn't like Ed getting an antler through the gut and then what and what was all that about anyway? It was kind of um she killed my family. Oh no, Alicia, she didn't really do it. I, I mean, that whole thing was just a little bit kind of that was a little wacky too. So the the episode was better. The sneak peek was, I would say, as good as the sneak peek at the beginning of the season. But you guys know what's going to happen, right? How many people saw the creepy guy in the preview that said, Hey, Alicia, I've been looking for someone like you. How many people saw that guy? Right at the end there. If you saw that guy, give me a quick thumbs up. So, you already know what Fear the Walking Dead is going to do, right? I will tell you right now. They kill that dude in one episode. Bounty Hunter. Killed him first episode. Creepy Ed. Kill him one episode. In fact, Creepy Ed didn't even make it 30 minutes. <laughs> you, you, know, you know how bad Creepy Ed is? The dude's been living out in the woods for like six years. And we put him on television for 30 minutes and he dies. Fear the Walking Dead kills everybody. So... Now you got the mad scientist with the long beard and he's somehow got Alicia trapped away from the group and she's going to she's going to end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. She's probably going to get drugged again. She's going to get tied up again. He's going to walk out to change the record. He's playing on the record player like the other dude. She's going to find an antler like she did tonight and get the duct tape free. He's going to come back in and say, you shouldn't have done that. They're going to fight. She's going to stab him, and he's going to die, and we're going to say, oh, well, there's another, there's another creepy dude that didn't make it more than 15 minutes. Wasted opportunity. But, yeah, um, in all seriousness, I love the setup. I liked where they ended. You know, another showdown. I mean, what's up with Strand pulling the gun? And, and you know, that's probably the other thing. That I, you know, I could have easily given tonight a nine. It tonight had the potential to be the best Fear the Walking Dead episode of the season. And and look, in fairness, it's hard. It's hard to do a good horror movie. It's hard to set it up. But and and you know you know how I know that it's difficult. Because they couldn't do it. They, you know, they got Alicia going down looking for a blanket. I don't, I don't have a better solution to that right now. I'm, I know I'm nitpicking a little bit. And if you give me 30 minutes, sure, I could find a better plot. But, you know, having the three girls there and creepy old man and him falling asleep or letting his guard down and then all of a sudden he has superhuman strength and he's back awake because... She didn't inject him the right way or something. 
I you know I would have rather seen him. Maybe trip, you know, maybe, oh, why not a loose floorboard? How about that? That would have been better. Instead of him just pretending they're not there and they're not trying to escape, I mean, what about this one? Big, big plot opportunity. All right. This was odd. This was very odd to me. So, Alicia tells Ed the truth. Um, no, that's Jenny's little sister. Hmm. Really? Okay. Well, to the benefit of all that's good, leave in the morning. (laughs) Come Come on. Wait a minute. You just enticed the creepy, potentially villain person by exposing the truth that could potentially infuriate him and make you want to make him want to kill you in your sleep, but yet we still decide it's a good idea for everybody just to take a nap and leave in the morning. Didn't like that either. Um, I thought that was some opportunity. I mean, and those those are like my big things. Other than that, it was it was entertaining. It it was not horrible. It it just had some things that. If you're going to make it into a horror, you have to do better. So they transitioned from the west, the Western to the horror, and they didn't do the horror very well. And they could have. Could have been really, really good. Fight and, you know, what do horror movies do? There's got to be a garage, and there's got to be some chains and some hooks and a kitchen and a loose floorboard that you step on it, and it comes up and hits you in the head and knocks you out. And then there's a cleaver, you know, a knife cleaver. And Alicia looks at Ed, and Ed looks at Alicia, and there's only one. And then they both dive for it, and then they wrestle. You know, that that should have been in the mix. Not, um, you know, go down the hallway and find your own damn blanket. It, not that. That that was a little that was a little lazy to me. Think of think of all the things that make good horror movies. And and certainly, let me ask this question. Do you guys agree that they were trying to suck us in to a horror movie vibe when they got to that house? You know, cabin in the woods type of thing. I mean, they set us up for that emotionally. So, why not finish it? Why, why give us, you know, Fear the Walking Dead they bake this nice cake, like this this cherry cheesecake, and they put it on a spoon, and they put it right to your mouth, and just when you're getting ready to take a bite, they take it away, and they eat it. That's what they do. They get you so close to thinking that they're about to do something epic, and next thing you know, we got Morgan and Strand. Now, on its own devices... I like the Morgan badass. I like Morgan killing the walkers. But it just went from horror, you know, western to horror back to western a little too fast for me. But again, it wasn't bad. It I mean, so let me ask this. And because I want to get some of your feedback in this. I'm I'm ranting a little bit. I'm getting fired up and I'm having a good time tonight. But what did you guys like most about tonight's episode? I'm curious to see um, what things really jumped out to you. For me, it was it was the setup from the trail to getting them into that scene. I liked the way they did it. I thought that was good writing. Wasn't just convenient. It was it was well done. You know, they're on a road and they get stopped and there's something going on. Julia liked the, the music creepiness. Um, I did, but look, dude got upstairs really, really quick, right? I mean, he did turn the music up. He went below the stairs. I would have thought Alicia would at least been a little bit more concerned with who's walking up behind her. Lying in the sand with uh, Strand and Morgan. Yeah, um... 
I'm leaning more toward Morgan, but you never know. Strand looks like he's finally went over to the uh, the questionable side there. Busy be like the walkers with antlers. I, I did think they did a good job with those. Morgan's storyline, getting the people back. Well, and now it's handcuffed a little bit, Jason. So, yeah, I mean, he is getting them back, but he's hit a little bit of a snag. Sergio looking for Morgan getting the crew back. No creaky floorboards. <laughs> yeah, you know, slower. You know, and I'll say Creepy Ed coming up behind Alicia, that was a little bit of a jump scare. And by a little bit, I mean you kind of knew it was going to happen, but he just got there quicker than I thought he was going to get there. Like, it was predictable, but at the same time, um, yeah, a little bit too fast. Okay, I think for the most part, it's Morgan sort of rounding everybody up. Now, that's all well and good if it was Jenny versus Morgan. And I just don't know that it's going to be because there is somebody else out there that blew up Tank Town. There's somebody else out there that has a submarine. Yeah, I know, look, I know she's got Grace's leverage, and, but again, that's kind of the whole thing we have did this season, right? It's It's been, trust Jenny, don't trust Jenny. I mean, look at June. What did June say? John, I'm tired of running. Every time I run, it gets worse. You're going to follow behind us, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to. Give me, give me a little sugar, honey. And, uh, yeah, I mean, come on. So, yeah, I, I'm not liking this because the way I see it is they're setting it up for a whole lot of gray area. You know, Will, I don't see them having this knockdown drag out at this point. Because we keep getting these alternate groups in there. So let's think about think about all the non Jenny storylines so far this year, which is interesting, right? We've had seven episodes. Jenny hired the bounty hunter. So yes, she was involved with that, but it was really Kind of about the bounty hunter and about the new area they were moving to. Then we get the Dwight Sherry reunion. We find another group. And then we know CRM is still out there. And then we find Sherry's group. And then we get the mass group. And then we have the submarine group. And then we have Creepy Ed. Almost as if semi-filler-ish. I liked it, and I don't like the term filler, but certainly an alternate story. And I'm okay with that as long as it's done well. But again, Jenny's got a hand in things. And we've had Jenny, you know, involved in the execution. But certainly, you know, Chaining Janice up and Janice died. So, yeah, I. Jenny's got a hand in killing people. But again, couldn't we kind of rationalize? How many people think that Morgan killed more Rangers tonight than Jenny has killed people? In the last two years. How many people think in one episode tonight. Morgan executed more Rangers. (laughs) 
So, you know, and I, I don't want to get into a, well, <laughs> you know, like we did with saviors. I don't want to get into like, well, if you're on the side of the Rangers, you're going to see Morgan as the bad guy. But that's really kind of what they're doing, isn't it? Isn't it kind of, I mean, who here hates the Rangers? Right now, I feel a similar vibe to the Rangers as I did the Saviors. But I just don't feel Jenny is Negan. But, I mean, she wasn't like Max, you know, mass executing people. She might have been doing some sneaky stuff behind the scenes, but nothing crazy. It, it's ramping up. There's, there's, is there the potential for crazy? Sure. It's a good point. <laughs> I mean, Tim says, I think Madison blew up more tank towns than Jenny's killed people. There you go. Will, there's the answer to your question. All right, Will, I'm going to quote Jason Moonshot Phillips. Will, this is the answer. I hate Jenny's group. Not saying they're scary or anything, but I don't like them. Fair enough. Now, who here thinks that Jenny, come on, all right, who here thinks that Jenny's going to kill great, a pregnant Grace? Raise your hand if you think that's going to happen. I, I, think, I think it's going to be one. <laughs> I think one person is going to say that. Now, let me say this. If, if they were to do that, I would absolutely, absolutely put Jenny on the radar. But it ain't happening. It just ain't happening. But you know what? If they did, oh my God, it'd be brilliant. I know you guys are saying like, kills you sick. Look, if they had the guts to give Grace Lori's comic book death, maybe Jenny shoots her in the back. Something. I would, I'd be like, you know what? Now, now we got a civil war. Now we got evil Jenny, badass, angry Morgan. It would absolutely make Jenny a real villain. And you know why they're not going to do it, Will? Because she's not a villain. She's a, she's a middleman. She's built. The reason we know she's a middleman she was begging like a baby to June. She tipped her hat and said, look, we got to talk. There's something else out there. I'm doing this to keep people safe. Jenny is recruiting to build something up. We may not like her methods of keeping people in her community. We may not agree with what she's doing, but she's out of fear She's trying to build an army of loyal people. She's not pulling people in so she can torture them and kill them. Will, and this is what I'm saying. She's not an evil torturer. She's not, she's doing things out of necessity. I don't like her, and I don't agree with everything she does. But I see her building, or attempting to build an army. Not hey, you know what? It's Tuesday. I don't like you. Why don't we kill you? Not that. 
she's very reactionary. I mean, she she sees something and then it it sets her off. But I would love it. I would love I would love if they would have pushed Jenny in that direction. I just don't I don't see with the tank town and the sub, I don't see it I don't see it happening at this point. It's almost like they gave us too much information and we're at the point of no return. So it's almost as if you're gonna have evil Jenny, more evil something else. Now, I don't want to start. I, you know what, country boys, I'm not going there. But I will go there. Just to humor it, who saved Morgan and why does Alicia want to go back to the stadium and teach Charlie how to clear out all the walkers? I'm sorry. I I don't know that I like it. We never saw Madison die. She could have been out there looking. Alicia could be looking for proof. Somebody helped Morgan and somebody blew up the town. It It's it's not impossible. I'm I'm almost in tears here. Because I really feel like I really feel like they're trying to bring Madison back. I'm sorry. I hate saying it. You can't do it. But I guess if you're fear of the walking dead, you can do it. I, I mean, they're movie star. They're planting the seeds. I mean, it it seemed impossible when it happened. It seems impossible now, but we are at the mercy of the writers, and I do feel like there's just enough gray area. Somebody save Morgan. We never saw the body. They now what's what's interesting they haven't been vague when they talked about it. They have point blank said that Madison is dead. Never left it open ended. Never talked about the return. They've said she's gone. She made the ultimate sacrifice. So on and so forth. In interviews. In desperate times, could they backtrack on it and bring Madison back? Sure. Wouldn't be the first time that somebody's changed their mind. And look, I agree. Ratings come, ratings come first. And if we're on the fence with the show and it's something that we would get excited about, do it. I mean, why not? It'd be a, it'd be a nice tailwind. It'd give it a nice push. You know, there's there's that part of me that the moment would be like, ah, what a cool moment. She's back. Ah. And you know what? Five minutes after, 
That is going to be like, what in the actual hell? There's no way she survived that blast. I mean, that's the way we're going to analyze it. And no offense, we all just have to dumb ourselves down a little bit in order to appreciate it because it's impossible. But if we like it, we like it. So I guess we could all say, yeah, we'll pretend that it didn't happen that way because it's more cool to have her back than it is to have her gone. So, you know, it's just a matter of what we're willing to accept for entertainment. <laughs> That's a good point. They'll, if it's fear, they'll bring Madison back, and it'll be like one of those um, Final Destination scenes. <laughs> Can you guys see that? Here's Madison walking out with like an M16. Alicia, Mom. You blew up Tank Town just for us. Yeah, I'll do anything for my kids. Come here, give me a hug. And then, boom, like an airplane falls on her head and kills her. Ed would be so fear the walking dead. Well, hey, we had her back for 10 minutes, and then they blew another plot. Um, I'm not saying she's alive, Crystal. I'm, I'm not going there yet. I will say... There were a couple Easter eggs tonight that make me question my own sanity. I, I'm i not going to be the channel that's going to start the kill said Madison is alive and all of the 99 Army said Madison is alive. I just know what we saw tonight. And I thought, I thought the stadium conversation with Alicia and Charlie was peculiar. I thought that Morgan saying, well, who saved you? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. I thought that was peculiar. I do know that they've said Madison is dead. But bringing a stadium conversation back. <laughs> I want Troy. Forget Travis. I want Troy and Mel the Vulture back. <laughs> Let her be in a beer bottle balloon. <laughs> Jim, she's with she's with Jimbo the beer bow. It could Jerry. It could be. Um, I would say it's more likely. Now. Now you're talking. If you really, if you really want to go big, let's forget Madison and say F and Rick Grimes saved Morgan and didn't want to reveal himself to Morgan because it would put him in risk. Rick was on a recon mission, saved Morgan's ass, and now Rick's group blew up. Tank Town, and are out there exterminating evil. Now that, that would be a story that would get me fired up. Let's transition it to the Rick Grimes movie. Let's give those Easter eggs. Let's get, let's get the crowd thinking, all right, hey, it's Madison. Let's get them going left and then get a Rick Grimes reveal. And you know what would be cool? You wouldn't even be lying. Because... Rick Grimes is not allowed on The Walking Dead anymore because the way they advertised it. They never said Rick would never make a cameo appearance on Fear the Walking Dead. They said, Rick Grimes, final episode. Period. But you could certainly have him do an episode of Fear to save the franchise there. Why not? Dude, he was making... $700,000 an episode. Give him a million bucks and have him be in the season finale of Fear and have him be the one who has been kind of lurking there. But look, there's something about this group that Rick is in. 
He can't reveal himself. Otherwise, he would have already saved Michonne. But I think that there's there's like this this rule of if if they know too much about you, they got to kill your family or something like that. Probably just one of those weird TV rules or or group rules or gang rules or something. So Rick's got to help people. And if he would have, if Morgan would have saw him, he'd have been Rick, Rick, and he would give him like a thirty-minute speech. But if Rick just kind of zoomed in, all right, give him some med back, hook him up. And also, would it not fit the narrative of the Jadis group when they saved Rick? Would it not make more sense that that's the type of group that would have flown in to help Morgan instead of just Madison showing up out of the blue? I mean, who's better equipped to save somebody? They saved Rick's life. He was impaled by rebar. Last time I checked, I don't know. I don't know Madison. Madison was a high school counselor. I don't think she's a doctor. So, if, think about this. If you've got, let me just give you guys two choices, okay? And tell me which one you would rather have. Unbelievable Madison death erased from your memory and Madison shows up on Fear of the Walking Dead, option one, or... Badass Rick Grimes flying in in a helicopter, saving Morgan, option number two. What are you taking? And if you're Fear of the Walking Dead, and as Movie Star said earlier, it's about ratings. If you really, really want to get ratings, do you manipulate the audience's mind and pretend that they didn't see Madison blow up a stadium? Or do you bring Rick Grimes back and really get people fired up? See, to me... The Rick Grimes story is believable. You know why? Because he's still alive. That's why. Because he's still flying around out there. Because we need to connect the dots with the Rick story, not go back in time to a uh, average Madison story. One could argue it wasn't that good when she was there, but one would never argue that The Walking Dead was not good when Rick Grimes was there. So if you if you have the franchise. Look, we know. We know that Rick is part of the story. It's not a secret. We know that they're pushing toward a movie. So it makes sense that there's going to be a connection to The Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead or the other one that's on that I don't want to say their name. But there has to be a tie-in to the movie. That's all I'm saying. So once again, if you guys are tuning in tonight, of course it makes sense, Gianni. What does it make sense about that? Did you watch The Walking Dead? Did you watch them save Rick? Are you aware of the Rick and Morgan dynamic of their relationship? That... They started the show. We're absolutely in that time frame. Of course it makes sense. They're gone. That storyline is our that timetable's already crossed paths. That was exactly that was exactly the speculation when Morgan was shot in the first place is because of the timeline. (laughs) 
we already saw earlier in the season where they found the maps connecting the dots. So we know that that's around the timetable with Rick. They're flying around. They're doing their work. They're studying people, how long it took for Rick to to get that connection. So there has to be kind of that that nudge. I mean, certainly. I mean, you guys remember all the hype and all the fake pictures of Rick and Isabel side by side and talking about the Walking Dead movie. You know, I think, certainly Gianni, that is an unknown. But, is Rick captive? I, see, I disagree. I don't think they took Rick. Let me, let me ask you this question. Why would you, I mean, let's rationalize this for a minute. Why would you fly a helicopter in, save a dying man, just to incarcerate him? I I mean, I'm missing something here. Why not just let him die? What's the point of using the resources to save a dying person if they're not going to be a part of your plan? You, You get what I'm saying? Just let him bleed out. He's dead. Where's the incentive? Use all your medical supplies. You fly them in. So I don't like that narrative of Rick being a prisoner now. Do I like the narrative of, hey, we saved you and you owe us. And this is the way life is now. But yeah, I mean, saving somebody to lock them up just doesn't just doesn't make sense for a movie. Well, here's here's the question. Isabella did. I mean, she had some she had some downtime. Get a couple kisses and grab a couple cold beers with Al. So, it's not like they don't have some form of freedom. So, to say it's inconceivable, Rick might have overheard the conversation, swooped down. Oh, boy. All right, guys, we got to save this one. Why? I, I don't know. He's dying. Let's help him out. Do you know? Nope, I don't know him. So, look, it, to me, it fits the story Isabella hooked up with Al and they couldn't be together because of the risk. So we know that that is a that's a rule. So why would the why could the rules not be the same for Rick? Why could Rick not be doing the same thing that Isabella's doing? And then he recognizes someone that he helped and he can't be close to them. He can't stick around. Because of the same rules. Because it's going to put them at risk. I mean, I certainly think that it, it's, it's a more believable narrative to me than Madison, who blew herself up in a stadium, is coming back from the dead. When we know there's not a Madison movie, but we know there's a Rick Grimes movie. So, look, I'm just trying to put the pieces together and use a little bit of common sense. So, if I had to bet on it, I would say there's stronger ties to Rick or Rick's group than than Madison. Although, 
it was a little interesting tonight. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start the Madison rumors. And I certainly don't think that Jenny is killing Grace. But I'll say it, I said it before, I'll say it again. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with big controversial deaths. I think it's very risky. I know people don't love the concept of it. But if you talk about something vile, something that Fear the Walking Dead has never really done to get people to hate somebody, that would be up there. And it's not that we have an attachment to Grace. I don't think that you know everybody here is going to say, oh, you know, Gracie, great character, I love her. But I think you would be so attached and sympathetic to her situation and that's what Fear the Walking Dead needs. I don't know that they've been able to create this this love of character. Maybe a couple could die that we had miss. But if they could kill a vulnerable person, I think that would rile the audience up like a lot. Just my thoughts. Um and and they got to be a little risky with it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm not opposed to them killing June. Um, Morgan needs somebody to love. We we've seen the Morgan, crazy Morgan, and we thought we were gonna see a little bit of it tonight, and it was like last minute apology, Morgan. I mean, he said, "I can't let you walk out that door." I mean, he was like, he was convinced you ain't leaving. And at least like, what? Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll do it your way. Morgan was toughened up. And then he had he had a moment of clarity. He said, for this to work, I need all of y'all. I need everybody. Um, I do agree with that. I, now, I don't want to get excited because I may only get disappointed. So if I saw something tonight that I, I felt positive about, and no, Will, it's not, Jenny's a big bad villain. But one thing I did see tonight that I liked was what Gianni just said. Alicia acted like Alicia tonight. So are they finally, Morgan has been sort of ramping up. So we're seeing a different Morgan. We're seeing a different Dwight. We're seeing a different Alicia. We're seeing a diabolical strand that could become a villain. If he's really in with Jenny, we might get to see Strand actually be that, um, he might actually have to make a decision and not be middle ground anymore. We potentially could see an angry John Dory. So like I said, I don't want to get too excited, but if you ask me like what the potential that I saw tonight was maybe we're finally getting to see our characters prepare to be badasses, not against Jenny, but against whatever else they're going to be facing. We may need them to be toughened up in order to handle what the next threat is. And... Again, if if Jenny if Jenny does something that is evil, we still got another problem. See, here's problem number two. 
I've asked you guys this question, so let me ask again. Really quick, on a scale of 0 to 10, give me the Jenny villain meter. 10 being governor in the comics, 0 being Scooby-Doo. From a one, from a zero to a ten, how evil is Jenny? And and you're still going to see a lot of threes and fours, okay? And it's okay. I mean, I kind of know the audience. So a lot of threes and fours, and and that's okay. It could scale up to a five, could go up to a six. But here's the second problem. From what you've seen and witnessed with your own eyes, on that same zero to a ten, how villainous, how evil are the Rangers? I mean, come on. <laughs> the group that supports Jenny. How evil are the Rangers? They're not. So, so the problem is, even if you develop her as a villain, you've got a whole bunch of bad cowboys that can't even be villains either. So again, I and I don't think that's intent. Well, no, I don't think it's without intent. I think that the Rangers and Jenny are just normal with a little bit of a mean streak for for the situation that they're in. Like, even, even the saviors, you guys remember, right, who was one of the worst saviors? Remember Rapey Davy on the saviors? Um, remember, they had some wild cards out there. Simon, the saviors had some pieces that were, well, they weren't good. <laughs> the Rangers, it's like, who are the Rangers? Can you guys can you guys even name a Ranger? One of them? Right. You got Simon. You got Jared. You got Davy. I mean, the Red you got a lot of them. Can you guys name a Ranger? Okay, Mark, question mark. Tim, no. We got Power Ranger colors. So, these guys, we don't even know what they are. They're just the Rangers, which is not a very scary name in its own. So, I see that as a challenge as well. If, if you were to say, this is going to boil down to a civil war between Morgan and Jenny. We again have the problem. Jenny is not diabolical really at this point, maybe on reputation only. She could still do some things that would, that would force that a little higher. But even if she did it, it's going to be like drunk Ed in The Walking Dead. It's going to be a couple of people that are out of character and I just don't see them following suit to be this, you know, bad, bad group. I mean, the one dude that follows her around, I mean, he looks a little smug. I mean, he looks like somebody needs to punch him in the face. But other than him, I don't even know his name. He's like Ranger number one. 
He's always kind of glaring at Strand. But, like, he could probably shoot somebody, maybe. But the rest of them, they're pretty much farmers, man. They're they're growing tomatoes and cucumbers in the offseason. And Morgan killed eight of them, I think. Wait, answer me this. Maybe you guys can help me. How in the hell did Morgan kill all those people with guns? And he had an axe. Is anybody just slightly curious of how he pulled that off? I mean, we're left to believe that Morgan is the second coming of Superman, but we didn't see it happening. One stray bullet. Right. See, because Morgan's a badass. But we didn't even get to see it. So we're just left to assume. Good point. So this is the way this went down. I need a volunteer. Somebody volunteer. I just need one. All right. I got a few people stepping up. So, all right, Moon. Moon, you're Ian and I'm Andrew. And we're scripting out this episode. So you say, you don't have to say it, but you're going to say, hey, um, we're going to have these rangers on a road and we're going to have Morgan kill eight rangers who all have guns. Okay. Um, what's Morgan using? Hey, he's got a, he's got a stick and an axe. All right. Okay. All right, so in order to film this, well, no, 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 we're not going to film. What do you, what do you mean we're not going to film it? He's going to kill them all. Well, how's he going to kill them all? It doesn't matter because the audience is just going to say he's a badass. So we don't know how he did it. We found out he did it, which is cool. But again, it's a... It's just something that you're forced to accept because of who Morgan is. Now, we got to see him kill a couple walkers. But my point to this is, you expect the rangers, I don't know how many there are of them, but you expect them to be part of this evil empire when eight of them can't even kill Morgan? He even gave them an ultimatum. He said, I asked him, are you with Jenny? Yep, we're with Jenny. All right, (laughs) I got to kill you. (laughs) All right, you're going to kill us? I'm telling you, it's like a scene from Billy Jack. We never saw it happen. It just happened. And I'm okay with it happening. But I'm not okay with that happening and then... All of a sudden, these rangers are superhuman, evil assistants to Jenny. I think the rangers are weak. I think Jenny is weak. And I think that whoever she's trying to build up to fight that she wants to tell June about is not weak. And it's why she needs all this help. So, again, I mean, I'm not supposed to point stuff like this out because I know it's, it's sheer entertainment and we're left to assume how it happened. But that's a pretty important thing that happened tonight, right? I mean, Morgan killing all those rangers, if the, we would have seen that happen 
it would have it would have prevented the big surprise, but it also would have been a pretty cool moment to watch him take down eight people with guns. That's that's my point, Tammy. That that is exactly why I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying the show was bad. I don't see the Jenny narrative is what I'm saying. I think if they would have if they're smart enough if they really wanted us to think that she was that evil, I think they would have given us a lot more a lot sooner. Just to me seems like 14 episodes is a long time to be concealing that. And the only thing I've seen from her is weakness that looks as if she's a recruiter. She looks like she really needs the help. And, I mean, for me, that's that's the way I think the story will turn. Correct, Gianni. They're making... They're making Jenny look reasonable with a mean streak. She wants Dakota back. She wants everybody back. Now she's pissed. But June could have killed her. And she doesn't have a hand. So they either want us to fear her a little bit or they're really trying to confuse us with her and setting her up for something else. I think they're great points. All right. So we talked a little bit about what we liked. We you know, we picked a couple things apart. We talked about the opportunity. The we saw the teaser from Next, the second half, it looks pretty good. Um, Certainly looks like it's going to heat up, we hope. But keep in mind, that's over several episodes. John, you're right, John could have killed her. And, you know, I I beat that to death last week. I mean, John could have shot her, but instead he's like, hey, June, give give me some sugar kissy face. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. We got to go build a hospital. And next thing you know, John's just veering off into the sunset. But he could have he could have shot her. He didn't. So that's going to come back on them. But again, maybe he didn't shoot her because she's really not that evil of a evil person. They're going to need her neutrality later on. They're going to need her support. That Sherry group is still out there. The sub people are still out there. I, I think that's honestly why they didn't kill her. I don't, think, I don't think they left her alive to have this epic killing of Grace and to brutalize people. I think they left her alive because... Her character is going to be somewhat salvageable, unfortunately. (laughs) Yes, there is. Jason, there's a whole lot more to this story. And in fact, every time we get closer, there's a new story. And I don't want all the answers. I just I, I just want to know a little bit more, a little bit faster. We didn't find out about the sub guys tonight, but we did find out about Creepy Ed out in the woods who really meant nothing to the story, if you think about it. there was He had no relevance to Jenny, except for he served as a reunion point. Mortgage is out there, man. He's just like, Finding people. I heard the music. (laughs) 
you know, that's that's a great point. Somebody blew up Tank Town, and there goes their fuel supply. So that could be that could be a factor. All right, you know what? We've actually, this is why you know it was a pretty good episode. We talked about it for about an hour and a half. So again, we're going to wind this down. I'm going to ask you guys again. Hopefully you saw some positives in it. Second rating of the night. I saw some sixes, some sevens, some eights tonight, which makes me feel good. Give me your final score of the night, and then we're going to wind this thing down. One more score. And uh, I'm going to shout out a few people as well. I'm going to stay with a 7.5. I liked it. I thought it missed the mark on a couple things. But I'm okay with a 7.5. Probably one of the better episodes so far this year. And definitely open the door for some future potential. So we got Busy B. And I'm going to leave your scores up there. But I'm just going to use your score and give you guys some shout outs on the way out the door. And just say thanks for... um, hanging out with us for Fear of the Walking Dead, for uh, The Walking Dead, for a couple episodes of The World Beyond. Appreciate everything that you guys do. Busy B, shout out to you. Julia Muse, Donnie T, B-Dub, Amy Bones Ferrero, Tim Lamora. Big shout out to my moderators, Amy, Julia, Ben, Kel. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Deadly Dimes, Jerry Etchison, uh, Jason Moonshot Phillips, Diana C, thank you. Jim Stone, thank you as well. Better scores, better scores. Um, <laughs> Crazy L, I'll rate it after I watch it. It it wasn't terrible, Crystal. It was it, it'll it'll entertain you. I'll put it that way. I don't I don't know if you'll love it, but I think I think it's entertaining enough. Rebecca Mendez, thank you so much. Harold Evans, thank you so much, Harold. Appreciate you, man. I saw a movie star up there seven, no doubt. One of the comments earlier was, had all the ingredients needed to stay in the oven a little bit longer. I think that was that was a pretty good analogy tonight. I, um, I just wished that more, I, I don't know, just a little bit more time developing it. Team Pat Peterson said 8.1, more from Alicia. Fear's a good book, missing a few pages. Football, 7.5. I'm right there with you. I, right on my mark. Moon gave it two scores. And again, longer stream tonight, more content, more debate. Hey, thank you for everything that you guys do. We're going to roll out. Um, we will um, we'll check the schedule and our timetable. We might do some uh, bold predictions on Sunday nights. If you guys are down for Walking Dead chat, whether it's the movie, The Walking Dead in 2021, Fear the Walking Dead when they come back. Do me a favor. Give me a quick 999, and um, if you guys like that, we'll get together on Sunday nights, and we'll just talk Walking Dead universe, and won't be a fear reaction for a little while. So if you guys want to see that, I'll read it in chat. Thanks so much for everything that you guys do, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday to talk a little bold predictions. Have a good night.